Hi, everybody. I am Matthew Miller, and this is our Fedora Council monthly video meetings. Fedora uh, Council is our top level governance and leadership body for the project, and we try to do our business mostly not by meetings uh, because meetings are terrible, but turns out they're inevitable. So we have them every week or so on IRC and, um, you know, chat based text meetings where we kind of go through tickets and make sure things are advancing. Plus, we have these video meetings every month where we generally check in with somebody doing something interesting or exciting or important or terrible in the project and see how that thing is going and what we can do to help or thwart it. No, uh, help, help mostly. Thwarting's not really the agenda. Um, so uh, this, this week, uh, we are excited to have Mark Pearson from Lenovo with us and John Rapizo, I think that's the right last name, uh, okay. who will be a voice from the heavens he doesn't have a camera on his system. Um, and we're going to talk about the upcoming news about Lenovo shipping Fedora Workstation on some of their laptops and what that means, how that came about, um, and what's going on. Uh, we've got a bunch of Fedora Council members on the call here. And Mark, um, hi, Mark. Welcome. I'm glad to Hello have you again. here. <laughs> yes. How's it going, um, buddy? I, I do spend a lot of time talking to Mark recently. So <laughs> no, just, yeah. <laughs> and usually, uh, usually I'm sending you boring Lenovo documents. I need to check her, okay? <laughs> yes, yeah, there is some legal stuff to deal with. Um, yeah. let, let, let's no let's set that aside for now, though. <laughs> um, tell me um, about yourself and how this got started and what's going on. Uh, so, yeah, Mark Pearson. Uh, I, work, so I work for the PC Linux team. Uh, uh, along with John, who's also on the call, he's uh, he's like my sidekick. He's, he specialises on the workstations. Um, so I I've been sort of at Lenovo for a while, but I joined the the Linux team just actually last last August, and it's it's been a blast. It's it's it's, uh, it's, it's been fun. Um, so our aim is essentially to get Linux running on our platforms. We do the ThinkPads, uh, ThinkStations, and some desktops, and so. My 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 goal is to get Linux running on those as as well as possible. So you know, trying to get uh, other vendors to contribute their drivers upstream, do firmware on LVFS, figure out the bugs, work with the distros, and and all that side of things. So lots of tentacles going off everywhere, which is fun. And yeah, so get go for it. I was going to say, I was going to say, we, we we've been working with the Red Hat guys previously on Rail. And I'm not actually sure where the first conversation happened with Fedora. I'm actually going to bounce that question to Matthew because I don't think I was on that very first conversation. But I know it came up and it was like, can we do Fedora on some of our platforms? It was like, oh, yeah. So that then happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, right. That was um, Edbert, uh, your predecessor. Edbert. And yeah. Uh, and um, Christian, who uh, runs the desktop team at Fedora. Uh, at Red Hat and works on the Fedora desktop team, um, had a conversation and it came out of that. And I got pulled in when things were already underway, which is an exciting way to get pulled <laughs> for something big, big news <laughs> like this. That's the project, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so um, I, I'm glad it's gotten gotten to where it is. I was just going to comment, maybe this is getting into the weeds all of a sudden, but I one of the things I found super interesting uh, talking to you and working with Lenovo is um, a lot of people, when they think of Fedora, they have the idea that we are, you know, a thousand programmers who are writing an operating system, sitting, you know, hacking on C code all the time. Um, you know? That's actually just Peter Robinson. The rest of us oh, okay. um, are. No. <laughs> um, but, so, um, but but actually, what Fedora does is integrate all, all this code that mostly other people write. And so, um, we we you know we we do some programming, and there's a lot of you know, infrastructure to tie things together. But mostly, we're an integrator. We get things from somewhere else and put them into yeah. a polished package that makes Fedora. And so, it struck me that Lenovo is actually very similar. Um, you've got a lot of vendors and you specify parts, but you know, like you're not making the fingerprint reader. Somebody's making the fingerprint reader to your specifications. Yeah. Um, and so in a lot of ways, um, the, the things about, you know, Fedora making sure everything is open source in our distribution is kind of what you're doing in making sure everything works with Linux in, in yeah. a Lenovo laptop. Um, it is a lot of going to your vendors and saying, I need something that's going to a fingerprint reader that can have an open source yeah. driver, get that upstream. 
uh, and so so I guess my life's easier because I just get to focus on a few platforms. You have to focus on everything out there completely, right? <laughs> uh, that, that's true. Um, although, you know, um, a lot of that is, you know, best effort. That's the other thing that we, the we did. We yeah. can say community, community support. Um, no. But that's no, true. I don't do as much coding as I'd like to, because um, a lot of it is, like you say, it's it's more pro project management. More, more, it's more pulling together all the pieces and making. We we do do some, and and you know we have some projects to to get some features, uh, things that maybe are on Windows that we want to have on Linux. But we, we've we've started that. We have some things coming out. So we we do do some, and we're try I'm trying to get our team more involved with actually actively debugging and contributing to changes. There's some things that go in that are quite platform specific and it's like no Lenovo should be able to contribute actively to those. We we've still got a lot of growth to do in that area. But something like that? Uh sorry, like the applications? Oh uh, yeah. Or yeah, sure. So we, we have a have a couple going on at the moment. I don't think either confidential they're not upstream yet though so we have one which is I think LMI uh, it, it's using the WMI interface to go and get and set uh, BIOS settings something that a lot of customers want to be able to go and retrieve uh, BIOS information uh, so, so I'll be able that. to change the BIOS settings from a yeah. control panel running in a, a GUI control yes. panel some yeah. Sort. yeah yeah so yeah and, and we'll have it so it yeah part of its kernel driver so that you can do that and then we'll have an application that lets you do it makes it quite it's not a very nice uh, utility to use and something's a little bit more user friendly don't think we have the GUI side yet that will come we're still getting some experience with uh, GNOME and, and that so yeah okay. but but yeah I know we've we've had quite a few people who asked for that um and then the other I'm just, I think I'm okay to talk about this but yeah our, on our new platforms we have different thermal modes uh sort of low medium high and uh, so they all work off function keys right now. Um, and so I've got a kernel driver that I'm working on so that you can then have a user space, GUI, that side of things. It's a little again process, but these are things that just hopefully make uh, Linux a little bit nicer experience on our on our laptops. So it's and then, gonna adjust yeah, it between between run cool and set my desk on fire levels exactly. of performance. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've got a marshmallow, it needs cooking, yeah. <laughs> So, cool. So yeah, and 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 then we have you know there'll be more more of that to come, especially as the team builds up more uh, experience. Um, will that application be open source then? Is that yes. the? Yeah, that's the that's cool. the aim. The, the the answer is yes. The, yes. No. Well, the only one. I hope just, that was I mean, a softball question, but <laughs> yeah, no, no, it mostly is that that we we've got one going on for a W one uh, where that might not be enough. See if, no, we won't. We'll have but, to make that out of Fedora, and that's just legal FCC. That's W W A N, and that's yeah. basically putting yes. a cell modem in your laptop, right? That's the yeah, and it's a, it's a tricky problem to solve. We really looked at doing it open open source, but it we couldn't find a way to do it. It's yeah. a yeah. tough one. Maybe maybe someone smarter than us will figure it out afterwards. But uh, but anyway, so yeah, not I I can't sit there and say one hundred percent. Everything will be open source, but from my point of view, everything that we can reasonably do open source will be. So I actually have, um, I, I'm kind of just taking some random directions and I apologize for that, but eh, that's how I do things. Um, the, the, the applications, have you looked at, will that be a standalone, uh, do you have a preference, I guess? Will that be a standalone like ThinkPad branded application or will it be integrated like into the GNOME and KDE control panels as ThinkPad? Specific setting I, panels. I think it has to be case by case. Uh, my my gut feeling is more integrated, but uh, it, it honestly I think it's going to be a case by case. It depends whether GNOME wants it uh, or not. Uh, I can see we might have separate packages that are maintained separately that are not part of that. I think you, you know what it's like with the community. I think it, it might be a case of some of them start off and then once they've proven that they're actually useful, might. Yeah, I think we're playing that very much by ear. I, I can definitely see like some of the BIOS settings being things that you want easily exposed, um, and maybe in the settings and other things that belong in a beware. If you change this, you should know what you're doing. Panel that might not be the main settings. Yeah, yeah. I think I think at least our initial one is going to be a separate standalone application, um, just partly because that's easier to do and get out there for yeah. customers who want it now and then but yeah if there's i have you know if, if we can make it so it's generic yeah. i mean 
ultimately, yeah, there's no reason not to. Um, go, going back to the uh, putting components together thing, one of the things people keep asking about is the fingerprint reader and whether that's going to start working on. I know it's, I don't understand why people are so excited about the fingerprint right reader, but apparently you all are. So we're going to talk about it some more. Um, I was going to say, uh, I, I was, I, when we did the interview with Jason, I think this is the one that I've got it set up on. Is the video going to work? I didn't want to do this with, with Jason because I figured a video demonstration would suck if it went wrong. But so here, X1 carbon okay. seven. All right. We will wake it up and. It works. I'm right. logged in. <laughs> cool. There you go. So it will work on the seven. So that's <laughs> one of people's questions: is will this start working on older hardware as well? And so I wondered if you could tell a little bit about oh, like yeah. the process. Yeah. Like, how do you get the finger? The fingerprint reader doesn't work. How do you get it to work? Are you writing code and getting it upstream, or um, uh, so this this one in particular? So yes. Uh, Call out Synaptics because they added the support for the device that's on on the seven. So they and uh, so fingerprint readers. There's two different types. There's match on host, match on chip. Uh, match on host is a, a, another vendor has I think looked open sourcing it, um, but it's hard to do. The their vendors are really wary about it because they're worried about it being reverse engineered, hacked, and losing their their IP and, and all the rest. So uh, the match on chip is all done in firmware. So there's so that's what this device is match on chip. And so Synaptics, I think, were happier to do do that. Um, it's interesting. They haven't done it for all their devices. I know there's some of our platforms that it works and some it doesn't. It depends on which Synaptics device is used, which is a shame. I've been trying to chase up why the other one isn't done. I, I know there's a reason. I just don't actually know what it is. Um, but it's yeah, it's uh, I think it's a little bit of that that battle of getting it, get it done. So, so this yeah, works. No, this, 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 this comes from there. I will say actually, so for the so that was for the firmware point of it, getting Synaptics to make that available. But um, I worked with uh, Benjamin Berg, uh, Red Hat engineer, um, and I mean he did all the hard work on this. So he he did a new version of fprint D and libfprint, um, and so I, I, I was helping in the testing sense of things. Yeah, that's, that's uh, as well. But, uh, um, but no, so that, that, that there was coding coming on from the community to, and he was working with Synaptics to uh, use their new APIs and things like that. So it, it is a joint effort. Um, but that, uh, yeah. And then this also works by then in the future, you tell Synaptics, we want, we want oh, things that match. Yeah, in so, that level. Drivers when you well, so yeah, what happens is I, I go to yeah, and I go to the hardware team and, and it's getting better and, and I'm a little bit nervous because I know I went and I checked that all our twenty twenty platforms should have this part in, right? I was like, make sure it is and I got the confirmation. So all our twenty twenty platforms should have this part in and if one doesn't, I'm yeah, that's we'll see. But um all the hardware's just coming out now, right? So but they should all do it. and that request goes one of the things that's happening in Lenovo, which is good, is that our hardware team does when they source their parts, they make sure the vendor has Linux support. That's that's been a big change. Not perfect yet. It's quite a it's quite a shift, but uh, it's it's much much better. And that that becomes part of building the new laptop making making sure that we do have that ability and that really reduces the headaches when you want to do a new when you want to release because the vendor's claiming Linux support, that makes life a lot easier. And it, it's interesting about the firmware. I mean so uh, the firmware on chip basically uh, it means there's a binary proprietary uh, software that's running on the chip that's not part of yep. Fedora but is a, a right. redistributable blob that we put there. Theoretically, yep. the on host one could um, be completely open, and there could be an open source fingerprint reader that somebody would 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 make that would um, yeah. be there. But um, we're not there but yet. Nobody in the has. World, so. Yeah, nobody has yet. Yeah. It's, no. This is one of the areas where Fedora lives in the compromise between your free software down to the hardware level, and um, you yeah. know, we have some of these binaries it's that can use yeah, the device. It's difficult, and, and, and in some ways, with vendors using firmware more, there's pluses and minuses to that, right? But I think the pluses is at least we get more functioning hardware for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Functioning hardware is the um, baseline. It doesn't work. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter how I, free it is. So. I, I, I know, I know, open source everywhere would be fabulous, but, but 
get this down the road. I've got a couple more questions I'm going to hold in reserve, but let's see if anybody else has anything they want to ask you. Ben, you were following mailing list discussions. Did you have anything that I haven't covered that you think we should talk about? I mean, you covered the fingerprint reader, and that's that was the bulk of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, um, yeah, so I think it was on the. Uh, yeah, there, there were quite a lot of good questions that came from the uh, mailing list and from um, your blog posting as well. That was uh, that was fun. There were lots of lots of good questions on that. All right. Uh, one of the other okay. ones is so. Oh, go ahead, Ben. I was going to say, you know, maybe it's a little bit of, you know, there was some question like why workstation and why not, you know, one of the other spins, um, you know, or something more customized like, you know, why workstation out of the box? I think it's going to appeal to the voice from the gods for this one. John, do you have an answer for that one? Yeah, sure. So we've found that uh, on the workstation side, we've got a lot of, a lot of customers using Linux on, and including Fedora on their develop, high-end development systems, uh, doing data science work, for instance. And a lot of them want the ability to be able to go and run this on a high-powered mobile system with a really strong GPU to do that work. So th we're really looking to enable it just to give that flexibility for the customers. Um, really, it's, it's m largely just the market clearly wants it. And we're trying to meet that need. Um, I think we also have a source of confusion, and actually, this this came up as a problem with how um, how Lenovo was going to advertise this. Um, we called it Fedora Workstation when we started doing the Fedora Next Edition things because we wanted to have the implication that Fedora um, it was a powerful desktop system that was kind of used for makers and creators, as opposed to like a a thin client consumer um, media OS, right? Um, and um, that, I think that was a fine decision at the time. Um, however, it runs into the distinction of Lenovo um, sells some of their systems as workstation systems and some of them as you know laptop, desktop, notebook systems. And the workstation is a particular class of higher powered hardware. Um, I don't know. It might be might be interesting actually, especially as I think the focus of that that um, Fedora workstation group has. Um, never really coalesced around just providing to the higher end. Um, people in, in the team have always wanted to reach the broader audience, and obviously, in a lot of ways, with this on Lenovo laptops, we are reaching the broader audience. So um, maybe it's time to rename Fedora Workstation to something a little more general. That's something I hadn't really thought about, but it's probably worth talking about. Um, but I think uh, the reason um, Lenovo is shipping you know, the thing that is our main uh, desktop offering in the project is the same reason we decided to have um, as part of again the Fedora Next thing where we decided instead of uh, it used to be that we would have a multi just desktop DVD that had like you know five or six different desktop environments on it that you could choose from um, and we decided to focus on one um, and a lot of that is just because we want we want everything to work, we want everything to be polished, and having having that focus makes that possible in the way that having five or six different options, um, it just becomes literally exponentially more difficult to support right. as you as you add each um, each new thing. Um, so uh, Fedora Workstation is the one that we as a project put the most into. It's the one that Red Hat has a lot of resources devoted to, and um, I think that makes the most sense for a partnership like this. That said, I certainly expect that KDE or XFCE or one of our more tailored spins like the Computational Neuroscience Lab, like those should run wonderfully on this hardware as yeah, well, even if it's not that our not the focus. I expect a lot of people will happily do that. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that means that one of the things we should focus on in those groups is making it easier to get a system that comes out of the box with Fedora Workstation installed and say, I'd like to check a box and enable to install the KDE desktop, which we don't have a good right. um, thing for that right now. That's probably some um, work we can do to kind of help the people who are working on those desktops make it easy for them to also not say, okay, you want KDE, now reinstall this version of it, because our distribution okay. of those desktops 
has been installer focused at this point. Uh, so that's something okay. for us okay. to get. Uh, we have got a question from the gallery uh, from Edward. Yes, go ahead, ask. Hi. <laughs> uh, well, my question is is more related to, to the terms of support because most people was interested in how much time will we be supporting science. The release a, a pace of Fedora is each six months, uh, more or less. So people were interested in how will be the support scheme from from the Fedora workstations in Lenovo. Sure. So, so uh, honestly, from a Lenovo point of view, we're, we're still figuring out those details. So I don't actually have anything official I, I can share. We, we have to talk to teams and and, and figure that one out. Um, I, we're, we're not going to be doing a new release every week. I mean, Fedora moves really fast. I know if you take 32 and you, there's updates immediately. Um, so we're not going to be doing a new image to manufacturing every week because um, that just we can't we can't do that. But I, I'd I'd expect us to move with your major releases and and my guess is there'll be some some involvement if you get major security things if you get spectral or meltdown. Well probably have to pick that up um, that kind of thing but yeah honestly I'm afraid I don't have a good answer for you right now as to how we're going to, to do handle that update um, we're still figuring that out <laughs> uh, my my expectation is that yeah. if someone comes you know three years from now with a problem and they say my Fedora 32 system is not working yeah. the first thing you will say is Update to the latest Fedora release and then see how it goes. Um, yeah. So yeah, and from our point of view, we take your we take the release and and we 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 just we're going through that now. We you know we we go through a test process and, and make sure everything. We we've been doing this before Fedora 32 release, but we go through a final one now. Um, and so every time we do an update, that test cycle happens, and that takes a bunch of people and resources and time so that we have to we do have to do a bit of a balance but yeah I, I don't want to be shipping three-year-old distros on a platform that, that that's not good that's not going to be good for anybody um, um so yeah we'll we'll have we'll have something sensible for for our users right it, it's something that, that that's the plan we just don't actually have it nailed down yet any other it's, questions yeah, yeah. Well, I'm presumably for upgrades there, um, they'll just just be prompted like any other Fedora yeah. no, um, Nine user when there's a new major version available. So right, they'll they'll, they'll get the same the same prompts to update internal inside the OS. Uh, the, the the answer from Mark is really just around how we'll update the image, like as Fedora Fedora 33 comes out or 34, when we'll iterate it. And we we will have some announcements later um, in the or over the summer here in North America to to address those questions as well. I, I like how you qualified summer as North American summer. There, that's that, that, that's important. We've got we've got two Australians on this call, <laughs> and other other people from South America as well. So yeah. To be fair, uh, the two Australians do live in the northern hemisphere, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, related to that, though, is worth pointing out, though, what you're getting when you get the system is exactly the same as if you went and installed Fedora 32 yourself, but we've got some documents in there. That's it. So, so yeah, if you're, your question about the updates, it's the same as you would get if you just went and installed, if you went and bought it with Windows, wiped it out and installed Fedora 32. So it, it will behave the same way. There's nothing we're sticking in the way. Any other questions? People, I mean, I know the answer to this, but people have asked about um, the Windows key on the keyboards and whether those will have a Fedora <laughs> logo or something else on those. It's, it's uh, exactly the same hardware. <laughs> that's what yeah. that's what I want to say. Yeah, same hardware. Yeah. If we, it's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I got the, blasted you, on this um, on yeah. the YouTube comments on the interview it did with uh, Forbes, yeah. but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. Just look at that key and don't think about it as a logo. Think about it as a symbol that shows you tiled windows, which is what you get when you press 
press that button in GNOME. Um, so I think right. it's actually, um, in, in seriousness, um, I, you know, it would be awesome for there to be a Fedora logo somewhere. I don't think yeah, that we're... button is the place for it because you push that button and you get your overview of your windows. You don't get Fedora. Uh, you get yeah. your, your working environment. So it's weird that Microsoft decided to make that function be their logo. I get why they did. They want to make themselves the center of everything. That's a nice instinct, of course. Um, but um, I, I would rather, you know, ship some nice Fedora stickers or have, you know, a, an embossed Fedora logo on the back of the hardware. If we're gonna make, if we're gonna make changes, that's that's yeah. what I'd love to see. Uh, uh, no, yeah, the, it, it's funny. I've been doing user documentation, and I have replaced references to Windows key with Super Key. So I did that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's good to hear. At least. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's a. Uh, it's uh, I, I, it'll be intriguing to see whether that's something that we're able to do later. But right now, yeah, this uh, from from manufacturing okay. point of view, actually the same hardware. So yeah, that's that. Do you that's think not... it would be possible for us to get printed, not not stuck on the laptop? Because I realize that's a a thing. No, if but, you but by printed, a key. Yeah, printed Fedora <laughs> stickers that could come in a sticker sheet that would go with one of oh, these. Oh, I actually, I did wonder whether they could do keys. Whether you could buy a Linux key and you just. Yeah try it off and stick oh, that. I right. didn't know if that was possible. And, you know, you go go on the Lenovo store and buy your... I, 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 that's just purely in my head, by the way. I have not talked yeah. to anybody about that. that. That's a good idea. That might be a money maker. Uh, I can just <laughs> see hundreds of broken keyboards to support my yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I, I suspect yeah, there's some no. people who say, go, yeah, I got a phone call. They broke their chisel on their laptop. <laughs> You need, you need to also there's there's a key yeah, removal yeah, yeah. tool right you need to also oh, yeah. spell the tool with it. Uh, <laughs> I mean yeah, at funny, the conferences right? we're used to give away little um like Fedora stickers to stick on that key on your keyboard. Right. So I reckon yeah. just a, a we still have them. The yeah, cool. still have yeah. them. Yeah. They, I put them on my fingernails too when I'm bored at the booth. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> so that that's an interesting question. That we are going to have the powered by Fedora stickers on the laptops? No. no yeah, no, that'd be no. that'd be more cool than the Windows one. Yeah, that, that, that yeah, be, no, and also will be so cute. Yeah, it would be nice. I did, and uh, on the flip side, I did ask, and again, I, I, I'm waiting till these actually ship. I did ask. I said there will be no Windows sticker on it, right? And the answer was correct. Yes, there won't be a Windows sticker on it. So you know, instead <laughs> <laughs> of police that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I don't know if that's you, but it, it would be cool to have the Fedora sticker on the Fedora Fedora systems. I, I'll ask. Um, I'd be but, uh, happy I mean, for even I, just stickers in the box but, uh, that people can put on themselves. Um, if we can, no, if we yeah. can get that, yeah. that would be cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so. so one of my yeah, other so. questions is uh, you'd mentioned um, that you work on the ThinkPad and ThinkStation, whatever uh, group. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are asking about lower end hardware and the possibility yeah. on that. Um, is yeah. that ever? Yeah. Let's say this is wildly successful. Is that ever a oh. possibility that I'll be able to buy a, a like I, a yoga with Fedora on it, or is that just way out of your scope? I don't. No, I, I don't think it's way out. We're we're not a biggest team in the world, so it's. Uh, I, I think we have to start here and see where it goes. If it's wildly successful, I would be surprised if it didn't come up. Um, I, I know just just as an aside, a lot of users do put Linux on the idea pads and. With with a lot of success, right? And I've and and I've heard of people doing that. And usually, getting the higher end ones is harder. Um, but yeah, no, at the, at the moment, the moment, is, yeah, at the moment, it's not on a roadmap. I can't sit there and say, yeah, we have it planned. But I think this project's still new enough that we have to see where it goes. Is there any influence in the hardware selection or whatever the, the process by which you tell Synaptic I want an open source? driver for this fingerprint so, reader, does that influence the hardware for those other systems as well, even if we're not officially supporting them? I, I, I don't know. I don't know how closely the hardware teams are tied in to that. Um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some, but because right. having common components across everything, but I don't know the answer, so I'd be guessing. Um, and so, so uh, give it, oh, go ahead. G given that um, I'm 
I do a lot of arm related stuff. I'm going to ask the same oh, yeah. question about the Lenovo arm laptop, whether that would be an I option think, as well. I think I've come across your name on the arm stuff. Your name was given to me as an arm person. Yeah, very have we likely. <laughs> uh, have, we, have we switched? Have we swapped emails before or not? Um, not. I'm not sure. I, I um... Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Uh, well, so, so, uh, yes, you should yes, talk. I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, arms, 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 difficult. So it's, it's not, it's not on a roadmap. It, it, it is, is, is the easy answer. Uh, but, but I personally, I, I had a bit of a pet project going to, to see what would be involved. Um, but it was, it was. The, 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 I know, I know. For arm, you need, you need some serious support from the BIOS, the ACPI stuff. Uh, so. Yeah, it, it's I, I I I had a look to see what would be involved because I thought it'd be really cool. <laughs> Just so, uh, yeah, not not on the roadmap yet. I it, it would be nice though. <laughs> yeah, so checking my email, you were on the thread, so that's probably why <laughs> you've seen my name. Yeah. <laughs> so, Secondly, it would be really nice to. Have. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah I have another here. another question from me is. Is the strategy with the ThinkPad uh, global, or is it just North America, yes. or have some no, no, scope? No, no. Absolutely, no, global is the plan. Global shipping is with that. One of the things we're going through right now. I know one of the questions is why why isn't the shipping yet? There, there's a whole bunch of stuff that has to happen, and it's the first time through here, so we're finding out some things. But yeah, the plan is global. There's there's some interesting challenges uh, around there. Energy certifications. Russia has its laws. Um, there's some, you know, but the plan is global unless there's a good reason that we can't. So, and those reasons will be out of our control. Right? Um, related to the lower end devices thing, I was looking at the pricing for the X1. I, I know you don't do pricing. Maybe John can give <laughs> yeah. me a little something here. Yeah, actually, it's um, funny. I, I had a quick look made... when they were released, and I was like, oh, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're phenomenally laptops. expensive <laughs> right now. Um, is like, yeah, is it is new, it expected right? that um, that that will come down over the next few months? Is it just that the initial launch models are high price models? Um, and so, it's like a thousand dollars more expensive than the Gen Seven, which surprised me. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I don't have enough experience with pricing. Listen, John, I don't know if you, you want to take that one. This is, I know, yeah, we. <laughs> I will also my, accept my, I won't touch that. Well, I, if, no, just from a personal point of view, I, I've seen it, right? And yeah, the Gen 7s just went on sale. We, we get employee discounts and they went on sale. And I actually looked at it and went, oh, <laughs> no, I don't, don't need one. I'm lucky. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the price, that does. But, but yeah, I I don't have any insight as to how they generate that the uh, uh, the value. So, yep. John, are you still there? Yeah, I am. And uh, we so the we have special pricing teams in Lenovo that handle handle that aspect. So neither Mark or I have any direct control or influence over it. Um, I can discuss with them and find out whether it's this is a launch thing and it's going to go down. But I, I won't have any influence over changing it if it does if it's yeah. an answer we don't like. That's fair. Uh, yeah, I, I you know I, I would love an eight hundred dollar model, um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if there's any consolation, the price is even worse in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take that, Canada. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think we pour maple syrup on them or something. They just don't, don't know. I haven't right. even checked the pound uh, GBP price then, because that'll be horrible then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those you guys should fail well. <laughs> right. uh, any other questions? So actually, just from my point of view, I have a question. So can you just introduce me to, are you all council members? Is this, or is it just everybody in Fedora can call into this? I was just kind of intrigued as to how the Fedora yeah. Council works. So, yeah, as, so um, as I want us to be more part of your community, so I figured I'd better learn how it works. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the Fedora Council is a body that has um, 
it, it's somewhat complicated. Some of us um, are hired, me um, as the Fedora project leader and Marie, who is the Fedora Community Action and Impact Coordinator, or FPAKE, which is a title we came up with because we didn't want community manager because um, man Marie doesn't get to manage anything. It's all just, um, yeah, right? Uh, just management having... seems like too much control. Um, yeah. So so we came up with that title, um, and she's stuck with it. It is the F cake. Um, uh, and then Ben is the program manager, and he is uh, actually technically an auxiliary um, council member. His votes, if it comes right down to it, his votes only count when it comes to program management kind of things. But um, we, we let him do other things as well. Um, then we also have a number of council members who are working on specific objectives, and then a couple elected council members. Dennis is one of our elected council members, and Till I saw on the uh, list of people as well. Um, and um, then we also have a, a diversity and inclusion uh, representative, um, Yona, who I don't think made this call, but she is often here. Um, and um, I think th th that's the general structure. We've got 18 people on the call right here, so that's more than there are council members. Um, we also have some um, basically interested and enthused people who are welcome to come join our video calls for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, which, 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 so we, we try to do things as uh, openly as tra transparently as possible, and this will yeah. also go on you know YouTube and be tweeted around so other people can follow later. Um, we, we used to, long in the dawn of time, have a much more formal meeting process where we had only council members able to speak in the in the text meetings and so on. And we've mostly abandoned that in favor of a general free-for-all, which usually works every now and then. We have to ask somebody nicely to um, chill out a little bit, but we haven't actually had a real problem with that. So we go for the nice. wider discussion. Oh, thank you. Sure. That was a great question. Uh, anything else for Mark or, or me from anybody? All right. Um, thank you all for joining. Um, next month, I've um, asked, but I don't think I got a response back because I literally was sending this as I started the meeting uh, for the new modularity team to present on what's going on there. So uh, the modularity project has been uh, move to the same team that does DNF and RPM, and so they're working on what the next generation of that is. They did a survey and they have some results, so hopefully they will be able to present that to us. Um, that'll be our next topic, um, and I will see some of you there, some of you for whom that is not interesting. That's fine. We've got lots of different meetings about different things. Uh, thank you again, Mark and John, for joining us, and no, if you questions, no, 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 no. goodbye. Thanks, All guys. Right. Thanks. All right. See you, everybody. Thanks.